some of our largest uh, immigrant communities were very heavily hit with with coronavirus. Um, you know, family, you know, multiple generations living in homes, parents still being having to go out into the field and, and work, like you talked about, even students and older students being out, being able to work. Uh, these families didn't necessarily have access to health care or maybe felt scared about getting testing or thought that there was a nexus between, you know, uh, testing and surveillance and um, and being and being uh, uh, and being targeted. And so, you know, you know, Schools definitely had a place in being able to communicate, you know, that people were safe and that, that these are where you can get testing and this is where you can have access to resources if you can. Um, so it just, it, you know, schools do have a place to, to make sure that we can communicate that. It, it's, it's hard and not everything should fall on the schools. Um, but what I found is that so often families are closer to the schools and to their teachers and to their principals. That relationship is tighter than almost any other relationship, right? And that's who they go to. We also need to be prepared for the social and emotional well-being of students when they come in. It's, you know, we're not just looking at, um, you know, language needs and students have, uh, and families have very nuanced challenges that we need to be prepared for. We need to make sure that our, when we're looking at our curriculum, that our curriculum is taught in a way and and delivered in a way that relates to our students regardless of where they're, where they're coming from um you know we need to be prepared for these challenges